Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I am back with another set of easel cards, but this time, as you can see, I made some tool shaker cards, which I hope you watch till the end of the video because I do have a tutorial process video on how I made one of these cards from start to finish. The collection I use is the digital collection by Polka Doodles and it is called Winnie Fruit Punch. As you can see, she is just adorable. And what I love about these collections is that they already come pre-colored. If you don't know how to color, it's okay. They are ready for you to use on your projects. Now, I did use my brother's scan and cut to cut them out, but you don't have to. I have in the past fussy cut them out if you don't mind fussy cutting. Please check the description box for a direct link to this digital collection, and I will also add other links to other videos that I have that I think might be useful. I'm going to start with the card front, which I've cut it down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And this is the tool that I use, which I got from Hobby Lobby from their clearance. I got it for just under $2 and it is a six inch. So I've cut down the tool to about six inches by six inches, just to give me enough space to be able to wrap it around towards the back. So you can see that I've add, added double-sided tip to four of the edges, but I'm only going to take the backing off from three. And you can see me here taking off the backing from three sides, and I'm going to fold over the tool from those three sides. And the one that I haven't done that to, that's where I'm going to add my sequence. And now it's time to add the sequence. Now this is the fun part because you get to play around with different colors. And what I've done is this iridescent white, I've added it to all of my cards and then I went back and added different colors. Like the ones you're seeing on the top of the screen, that very bright pink, the blue, the turquoise, and also another color, color I added to all of the sequence was um, that really um, chunky glitter, I think it's called. It's really big glitter. That one that you're seeing right now, it's really pretty. And I just love how all of these colors looked combined. It, it just looks beautiful. And it is such an easy project to do. I think that this tool method used doing shaker cards, it's super easy. Anyone can do it, you guys. So I hope you can follow along with me and make some cards. So now I am going to take that fourth piece of backing off and wrap around the rest of the tool and cut the excess off and it's done. Look how easy that was to make. All right, so let's try this one more time, okay? So I just want to tell you that this is the second tutorial that I do doing using the tool method. I've done this before using some tags. I made some tags and I did it using hot glue. Now, let me tell you that I was reading a lot of the comments and a lot of you were saying that it adds a lot of bulk, which is true. It did add a lot of bulk, but what I did that while the glue was, was still hot, I did press it down with my silicone mat that I had. So I made it pretty flat. But someone, I think it was Robin, she said that she used double-sided tape. So I thought I would try it with this one. And I do think it's a lot easier using double-sided tape. I don't mind either or. I still think that both of them are pretty good glues to use because at the end of the day, I'm still, after I'm done, you're going to see, actually that clip did get cut off, but... When I'm done adding all of my sequins, I am going to add a backing to it so you can't see the back of these. It looks very finished and I did cut the paper at the same size, which is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. All right, so it looks like I am done and see how easy that was, you guys. I made a total of 10 of these, but I think in this video, I'm only going to share about four of them. So you, so you can see it right here. All of them are done. They are cut at five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And now I'm going to start creating this frame. The frame is going to be a little bit bigger than the actual cards. I've cut it down to five and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to leave a half inch border 
So I'm going to cut the inside. So I'm using this Tim Holtz ruler. You can see I've left a border of half an inch and I'm going to do that to all four sides. Now, if you have like a really big square die or, you know, or anything else that you can use, I don't know what else, um, I'm pretty sure a die that you can cut on the inside of this, then that would be fantastic. But I didn't want to use my dies to give you the option for those who don't have a lot of dies or who don't have any dies. You know that you can use this using an exacto knife. All you got to do is just cut an opening pretty much and that's it. Now that I'm done cutting out my very first frame using white glitter cardstock, I'm going to, to decide which background looks best with this white one. As you can see on the upper left hand corner, I have cut a total of 10 of these card fronts. So I think I'm going to stick with the clouds or maybe not. I guess I ended up using this really pretty butterfly one. So. I'm adding this silicone adhesive, which I got from the 99 cent store. Thank you, Martha, for recommending me this adhesive. It is fabulous. I absolutely love it. I've been using it for everything. I know you don't really see it in the video, but I did push my sequins to one side of the card so that when I'm adding that adhesive, the sequins doesn't get adhered underneath that frame. I hope that makes sense. And here is another way that you can dress up your card fronts using this trim that I got from Hobby Lobby and I think it looks very pretty. And now it's time to embellish these card fronts. I'm going to use one of these which I've decided to use the one with the hearts because this glitter cardstock blended in too much with the other one because it was the same paper. I'm going to add adhesive to the back of this half doily, add it to one side of the card, and then I'm going to add 3D foam tape to the back of this Winnie girl, which I think she is just so adorable. And I did cut it out using my brother's scanning cut. And then adhere it onto that half doily, and then I will add the word thanks and you will see that I added to the to the first letter and the last letter because I didn't want to add any adhesive to the center so that the glue doesn't stick onto the tool which will seep out and uh, get adhered to some of the sequins because I want the sequins to be flowing around very easily you know throughout the whole card so this that is how I've done this process I'm going to start with a piece of paper that measures eight and a half by 11. So on the eight and a half side, I'm going to cut it down to five and a half, giving me a card size of five and a half by five and a half. Cause you can see I did not touch the 11 side. Now I'm going to use my scored board and I'm going to score it right down the middle, which is five and a half. And then again, down the middle, which is two and three quarters. And you can see the two score marks right there, fold them. And that bottom piece is where you're going to add adhesive and glue your card front. So I'm going to try and align it as best as I can, make it nice and straight and press on it towards the back. And it is pretty much done. Now I'm showing you the back. It is not finished, but I do finish the back with a designer piece of paper. So I'm showing you that you can fussy cut out the leaves, which it is part of the collection. And I had already pre-made all of these bows and flowers. And what I like to do is lay them on my project and see how I like it. And if I like it, then I adhere it down. And I'm going to use hot glue because it is a method, you know, that dries really fast. And I do put this piece of paper underneath so it, it doesn't stick to the tool. And I'm going to adhere it using hot glue, the two flowers plus the leaves. The front of the card is completely done. Now we're going to work on the inside. I cut this piece of paper just slightly smaller than five and a half by five and a half. And that's going to be my layer. It's leaving me a really thin border, which is what I like. And then this piece of paper, I did cut it out using a die that I have from my stash. And then I added that beaded trim serve as a stopper so that is it and this card is completely done thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and please don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you think thanks for watching bye everyone